Morning everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Just brought home a load of pine from our forest. Melanie and Michelle and I all went out and we cut uh, dead standing trees. Sadly the jack pine this is all rot. There's no there's the only good meat in there is in the center and it all rots and uh, I, I thought I had some that I was going to be able to run on the mill and then I looked and it's all, it got all rot on the ends. It's all of them, you can see that especially. But uh, there's still mass for burning. That's not yet too far gone for firewood. The problem though is it's all wet. That darker colored ring is wet. So a lot of these are going to take time to dry. Some of these like this, very dry, ready to go right now. But most of this is still wet, although pine dries so much faster. So we get these stacked, we might still be burning some of this by the end of this year. Well, everybody, this is dinner. And, nope, you don't eat it like that. You open it. This is how Melanie used to take her lunch to school. Mm. Yeah, Michelle wants to show hers. That's how they took their lunch to school. Right there, that was their little lunch pouch. And when you snip the little ties, that's a banana leaf, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you cook it in. That's beautiful. And there is a school lunch or dinner for us tonight. Mmm, looks good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Well, we're gonna eat. Talk to you later. We got a load of oak. Some of it is badly aged. But there's some good meat in the middle. That's BTUs. And some of them are pretty good. That's all BTUs. That's heat for our off-grid tiny house. Although the outside is ugly, the inside is really solid on these. So that's gonna be some good heat. We open them up, let them dry out, and uh, some will be ready this year. Like that's pretty good, and that one. And some are going to take a while for next year, like that one and that bun. Once we open these up, we'll find out better what we got. But somebody had these in their home and never used them and said we can come get them. And so here is probably half the load, a little less than half. I got to get the toolbox off so we can get the rest of them. But we're going to unload this and go get the rest. We'll have some firewood. So... We gotta do Melanie is get these out of the way first so we don't have to throw them as far. Yeah. These are big and heavy. But then uh we got room for the two loads that we're gonna bring in. I don't want to risk hitting the log splitter. Some of these are heavy, some are not. a lot of wood here yet to split. That was just got to be recut. All right. Let's get this truck empty, eh? Help with that. The top ones are heavier. You want to help me with this? This one's bad. And give it a throw. Oh, a little bit more of a throw. Here. Ready? Give it a throw. Yep. Perfect. Let's get the top heavy ones. Ready? I'll come around. No, it's all old. Throw. Good, this is working good. Here's a heavy one. Oh, that one's really heavy. Ready? Oh, oh that one. I felt that one. I gotta be careful. I got a hernia belt down, but it hurts. Yeah. I have to put my hand in here. 
Did you put your hat? No. Why? There's a lot of BTUs left in these though, that's for sure. I can feel it. They're heavy. Now there's a load. We took two off or three off before I realized I gotta grab the camera. That's some heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. We're moving some of these up behind the pile more so we can roll these off because I am not picking them up. Those are gonna have to dry a little before I can touch them. I might even have to use the lift. It took both of us to get them on there carefully without getting hurt. I'm just rolling them off the truck because they're wet. That's a mess to clean up. I'll get that later. That's going to go into compost. That's good, good stuff. Fertilizer. So there's that load. There was no way we were picking it up, so we literally rolled it off the truck and rolled it over here. That's just too heavy. Those are big ones. But that'll be some good firewood next year. Too wet this year. Way too wet. So anyway, we're looking better. We've got all that. We've got all this from that other batch we did. We got some little scraps from last year. Um, most of those are used for the little wood stoves. We've got a bunch over here that we've rolled off. Some of which I want to use in the wood shop for some projects. We've got this growing pile that needs to be stacked and, and dried for next year. And then there's the new batch of logs to be split. Here we've got a mess of logs that we did split we got a stack the reason I haven't done any stacking is because we're gonna run them along where the fence line is on the inside of the fence but I want to get out that dead tree first and that one right there is dead and I, I don't want them to come over on top of my fence or my firewood pile so I'll have to take them out before I can start running the firewood pile and uh, redoing my improved fence that I have planned. So that's it for today on the firewood, and that's it for now on these. No stacking for yet, for now. Gotta get that set up. But we're gonna have a much better fence, um, and we're gonna have a firewood fence all along the roadside. And far enough in so we're not in the zoning way but we're gonna have it along somewhere along this area here and that's close to where we're heating so that's fine that'll work out it's a lot of firewood some of this I've already burnt some of these I've been grabbing them as needed sorting by hand the ones that are lighter and tossing them in the wood stove so Melanie made some a uh, oh I forgot what it's called what right? wood, wood. Um, bud bud cassava cassava root, and it's called bud bud. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a banana leaf, and you peel it like a banana, which is sort of cool. There we go. And you have a snack. Is it good? <laughs> What's that mean? Huh? Is it good? Say yes. She gets shy. So that actually is a um, sweet, grainy um, snack. It feels a little bit grainy in your mouth. Yeah, there's the coconut milk on it and evaporated milk and sugar. And it's a very nice little snack. And it's fun to eat. Right, Michelle? Michelle going to be shy. Okay. Hey, everybody. I've got here the hose for my Mr. Heater buddy. The... This is... What we use in our store, sorry, sorry shop, to heat the place in the winter. This goes on to your heater buddy. This end here screws right in where the little um, camp bottle would go, that little small bottle. And that screws in in its place. And then you've got here the part that screws into your propane tank. My problem is the last time I removed the hose from the propane tank, the gasket stayed in the tank rendering it useless for me 
So I had to go to town and buy a new gasket. I've already opened it, but I haven't done anything yet with it. I'm hoping this is the right one. So I already cut it open to save time on the video clip. And I'm going to attempt to put this back into service. I'm really hoping this is going to work. Yeah, that was the right one. Boy, that guy knew his thing. I went into Ace Hardware, and I said, I need to the gasket for the heater buddy and he says well these are the ones <laughs> it must be a common thing well there it is that was a quick fix so now we can continue to heat our store that was Michelle and uh, that's that's a simple little detail if that ever happens to you it's just a I grabbed two of them it's just a little tiny gasket it's a uh, number eight o-ring so if anybody else ever has this happen to them uh, it's not a, actually a gasket, it's an O-ring. And that's it from Ace Hardware. That's the one I got to replace it. It pops right on. I ended up getting two packs. So I have a spare in case that ever happens. Because if this is your heat, like it is for our store, and that thing's bad, you've got to go back to town. And The place was, uh, it was after hours when it broke. We just had to hope and pray it didn't freeze that night. Fortunately, it didn't. So we're back in business. Hey guys, it is war. I hate killing cute little fuzzy animals. I hate it really oh bad. But what I hate worse than killing little fuzzy animals is the destruction they're doing to our property. They actually have a way to get into our mobile home. And they do. And they keep making nests. And I love them, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to share my house with you because they ruin things and they ruined my winter coat I'm very upset because I went to get my winter coat out which was stored in here and it's wrecked so now it's war we are at war with the critters this is uh, all Tomcat brand and I chose the well I've been using the Tomcat baits and bait stations for years this is the only thing I'll use. This is what I've been using for many, many years. And a stupid raccoon that was living uh, inside our closet of our mobile home one time was dumb enough to take the lid off a large container of this. I had a bucket, a one gallon bucket of these baits. And he was dumb enough to take the lid off and helped himself to some. Well, three days later, I didn't have a raccoon anymore. So I guess that was a bonus. It's not something I intended. He helped himself, but he got himself out of our trailer. So I've been using these guys for years. It's all I use for mice. I'm not advertising. I paid for these with my own money. I'm not associated with them. I'm telling you, Troy, from the do-it-yourself world, what I use and what works for me. Uh, one feeding, and they're done in three days later. That's it. Done. Usually gives them time to get out of your place. For some reason, I don't usually find the bodies, which is good. Now, I got the Tomcat Rat Snap Traps. I kept a, the um, paper to show you. It is for chipmunks and rats, and it'll probably work for mice. And that, those were individuals. I bought two of them separate. And then I got a two-pack of the Tomcat uh, Snap Traps for mice. And... There's a mouse getting into our van, and every night he triggers that alarm. And I am tired of getting up to see what is in where on our property. So he's got to go. I'm done with that. He's trying to set up home in our van. We can't have that because he's going to wreck something, and I'm tired of not sleeping at night. So I've got these guys. I'm going to be setting these up. No. I got these over the old-fashioned wooden spring trap because those wood traps have that little piece of wire. You, you, you bring this heavy-duty spring-loaded uh, piece of metal over and this tiny thin little piece of wire goes under a little loop of metal and you try to get your hands away before it snaps. I don't like them. They're scary and I've been caught in them and they could break a finger. This is amazing. Now again, I'm not advertising Tomcat. It's just my experience. Watch. Set. Unset. Set. Unset. I like it. Look. Without getting in danger, and I can even do it safely. Look. Set. Unset. Without endangering my hand, I can unset. I like that. 
I like that a lot. These are a lot stiffer. There is... This one locks. I can feel it lock. But, watch. I'm holding here. I can trigger it and ease it. What? No danger. I like that. They also show that you can do it with your foot. Okay. Right there. And you set it with your foot. Or your hand. Either way. I like that because it is uh, just... The other ones are a danger. They worry me. They scare me. I don't like it. Now these have a removable food bay. If somehow I haven't looked at it because I'm just going to put peanut butter in. Um, I always just put peanut butter in the middle. So, but look, it's so safe. Because I'll tell you what, to re undo that rat trap, careful. Those rat traps will, will destroy your finger, the metal ones, the metal and wood ones. Look how safe this is. It's locked, press with your thumb hard, reset, release it. Now, if you don't want to, if you don't feel it's safe, then stick something else in there. But as long as you got a grip on here, I'm holding it tight, I can trigger it, and I, it's, it's safe. I like this. I am terrified of those heavy-duty, old-school rat traps. So, I'm not going to show you details of anything or any gory results, but look at that wicked grip on there. And it's a strong spring. That is really strong. That's probably why they show that you can do it with your foot, because some people might not be strong enough. But, that's a grip. These, I guess, I guess if you're a mouse, whoa, yeah, that's a loud snap. It made my ears ring. That's a good grip on there. Um, doesn't feel like much, but I guess if it snaps, it's going to. If you're a mouse, those draws are probably not going to feel good at all. Again, I don't like to kill, but I've got to protect our home, our van, our property. It is what it is. And this is the bait stations. These ones, that holds two bait stations and mice, rats, or chipmunks can get in. And I like these for like in the garage because I don't want bodies all over the place. And this, they'll just, they'll come in, they'll get their head in, they'll eat a little bit and they'll go away. He'll go, he'll die somewhere. Next one will come in, eat a little bit. And this one can just be set there, set it and forget it. So that goes in the garage, which is now the wood shop. And uh, that lasts, that lasts a long time. And then you've got the uh, 15 um, blocks to refill it. So anyway, I'm going to go set these up and get rid of some critters here in the off-grid homestead. Protect our stuff.